Solitary confinement is home to the most notorious, evil, and ruthless criminals on earth. These criminals are often locked away until the day that they die. They spend their days in a small cramped cell, often having only one hour of fresh air per day. They are allowed little to no outside contact and they are under strict supervision. So let's take a look at some of these criminals and the terrifying things that they have done to end up in solitary confinement. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the Top 10 Scary Prisoners Left in Solitary Confinement Part 2. And since this is Part 2, make sure to check out Part 1 of this video series as well. Starting off this countdown, we have Charles Victor Thompson. On April 30th, 1998, Charles Victor Thompson got in an argument with his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend. This argument left them both dead. As a result, he was sentenced to the death penalty. While waiting on death row, Charles actually managed to escape. In 2005, Charles escaped and spent three days on the run until he was found drunk at a payphone. He was then recaptured and placed into solitary confinement where he waits until the day he receives the death penalty. Moving on at number 9, we have Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson was an English criminal who gained the title the most violent prisoner in Britain and Britain's most notorious prisoner. He was first arrested for armed robbery and served a seven year sentence. Upon his release, he had a career in bare knuckle boxing. Then in 1988, he was convicted of conspiracy to commit another robbery. However, this time when he went back to jail, he became a more violent inmate. In fact, there were multiple times where he took inmates as hostages. He would even often fight guards and fellow prisoners. As a result, he was moved 120 times. That's right, you heard me correctly. Nowadays, he spends his time in solitary confinement, which he will probably remain until his death. In our 8th spot, we have Gary Ridgway. Gary Ridgway, otherwise known as the Green River Killer, was responsible for the murder of 48 women between 1980 and 1990. However, it's believed that he may have killed as many as 71 people. He then would dump the bodies along riverbanks in South King County, giving him the name the Green River Killer. He was arrested arrested in 2001 and given 48 life sentences. Since his conviction, Ridgway has lived in virtual isolation. He was initially going to receive the death penalty, but ended up trading information about his murders to get out of it. But even in solitary confinement, people still considered him a big threat. They feared that he was studying his surroundings and looking for weaknesses, planning to attack or to find a way out. In our seventh spot, we have Ivan Malay. Ivan Malay is considered Australia's most notorious serial killer. Between 1989 to 1993, Malay murdered seven backpackers. He would pick them up off the side of the road, torture, kill, and then bury their bodies. As a result, he was given seven life sentences. He spent these sentences in solitary confinement at Goldburn Super Max Prison. Prison officers say that on multiple occasions, Malay would try to escape. He would often bust his head open by banging it on his cell's wall so that he would get an external visit to the hospital and then try to escape from there. Another time he swallowed metal to get a trip to the hospital and even once he tried to cut off his finger. He was considered a highly manipulative inmate with a high risk of self harm. Malay spent 18 years in supermax prison before he died of esophagus and stomach cancer. Moving on to number 6, we have Michael Swango. Michael Swango, aka the serial killer physician, poisoned over 60 of his patients, though he only admitted to causing 4 deaths. Michael Swango worked at multiple hospitals. At the first hospital, nurses began to become suspicious of him after healthy patients would mysteriously die. One nurse even caught him injecting medicine into a patient who then became ill. Michael then bounced around from hospitals, poisoning patients' food with arsenic or other poisons, or he would kill the patients by overdose of whichever drug the patient had been prescribed. In 2000, he was sentenced to three consecutive life terms with no possibility 
eligibility of parole. He is currently serving this sentence at the ADX Florence Supermax prison. There, he is confined to a 12 by 7 foot concrete cell. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Richard Lee McNair. Richard Lee McNair received two life sentences after being convicted of murder, attempted murder, and burglary. In 1987, McNair murdered one man and shot a second man four times during a robbery that went wrong. He is currently in ADX Florence in solitary confinement. Now, here's the thing. Richard managed to escape prison three different times. The first time was in 1988 when he used lip balm as a lubricant to slide his handcuffs off. Then in 1992 he escaped again, and in 2006 he escaped for the last time by mailing himself out of prison. As a result, that's why he was placed into supermax prison and in solitary confinement. But to this day he is known as a master escapist. Making our way down the list at number 4 we have Robert P. Hansen. Robert Hansen was an FBI agent that sold thousands of classified documents to the Soviet and Russian intelligences. These documents outlined US strategies with regards to nuclear wars, exposed developments in the military's weapons, and detailed aspects of US counterintelligence programs. His espionage was considered as possibly the worst intelligence disaster in US history. Robert pleaded guilty to 14 counts of espionage and one conspiracy to commit espionage. As a result, he was sentenced to 15 consecutive life terms. He is now serving his time at the ADX Florence, where he is in solitary confinement. Now, the reason why he's in solitary confinement is because he knows way too much about highly classified materials. Therefore, he is locked away to prevent any of this information from getting further leaked. Robert will be in confinement until the day he dies. Coming in at number 3 we have Andre Chikatilo. Andre Chikatilo, otherwise known as the Butcher of Rostov or the Rostov Ripper, was responsible for the deaths of 56 individuals. He would lure people that he met at bus stops or train stations away to remote locations where he would then murder them. He also had cannibalistic tendencies and would eat certain parts of his victims. In 1990, he was finally caught for these heinous crimes. In fact, when he was arrested, he said that he couldn't live without murder. He compared it to a first love, calling it unforgettable. Andre spent two years in solitary confinement awaiting his death penalty in 1994. Coming in at number two, we have Ed Kemper. Ed Kemper, also known as Big Ed, is an American serial killer who killed 10 individuals. It all started back in 1964 when Ed killed his grandparents at the age of 15. He claimed that he killed them just to see what it felt like. As a result, he was locked away for 5 years. In 1969, he was released at the age of 21. But he didn't learn his lesson because he went on to murder 8 more individuals, one of them being his own mother. Eventually he was convicted again and is now placed in solitary confinement. Ed is only allowed an hour of recreation a day and 3 showers every week. But Ed is apparently okay with this, since he said that he is happier in prison than he ever was as a free man. While in prison, he got the name Big Ed since he weighs around 300 pounds and is 6 foot 9. This dude is massive. I don't know how he fits in that cell. <laughs> and in our number one spot, we have Martin Bryant. Martin Bryant is responsible for one of the world's deadliest shooting sprees in Australia. He took the lives of 35 innocent individuals and injured 23 others. He was given 35 life sentences with no opportunity for parole. For the first 8 months in jail, he was held in a specially built suicide prevention cell. But now he is in solitary confinement. Back in 2010, a reporter visited Bryant and claimed, and I quote, Bryant lives the most hideous existence imaginable. He is in solitary confinement, grossly obese, and not allowed to see anyone except immediate family. Apparently, because he is suicidal, he is often drugged up so that he won't harm himself. The reporter also stated that he was placed in solitary confinement because he loves hearing about himself and what he did. So, solitary confinement is a way to deprive him of this. And that's all for today's video, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments for my video, Top 10 Creepiest Things Found in Museums Part 2. Diego Hernandez commented, I know you're gonna give me a shout out. You must be psychic, how did you know? 
Blaze Fire commented, I really don't know how this woman sleeps. Please show me your ways. Honestly, I'm numb to everything, okay? I've seen way too much. <laughs> Vlad903 commented, Dum Dum, I want gum gum. I love that Night at the Museum reference. And that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you. Hey. <coughs> I had a crumb that I, never mind. He even, he even would, mm, he was considered a highly manipulative, mm, these documents outlined US strategies, strategies, strategies. Why am I saying strategies? <laughs>